Hi there. My name is Elizabeth August, and I graduated from Christopher Newport University's MAT program in 2009. I currently teach kindergarten at Dutro Elementary School in Newport News, Virginia. Today's lesson is focused on kindergarten and first grade reading, but hopefully it can be enjoyed by students of many ages. First, we're gonna start off with some phonological awareness activities. This is basically the understanding of sounds and how they work in words. One part of phonological awareness is rhyming. So we'll practice that first. Remember, when you're rhyming, you're matching words that have the same ending, okay? So, first one. Which word rhymes with sun, log, or run? Sun log or sun run? Sun rhymes with run. They both end with un. Which word rhymes with nap? Tap or sit? Nap tap or nap sit? Nap rhymes with tap. They both end with app. Which word rhymes with boy? Toy or cat? Boy toy or boy cat? Boy rhymes with toy. They both end with oi. Which word rhymes with fish? Hot or wish? Fish hot or fish wish? Fish rhymes with wish because they both end with ish. Now we're gonna count how many syllables are in words. We can count these word parts by putting part of our hand under our chin and counting the drops that our chin makes. Some people count syllables by clapping, but I like to put two fingers under the end of my chin so that I can actually feel the chin drops when I'm counting syllables. So let's do a couple of these together. First word is island. Ready? So put your fingers at the end. Island. I felt two drops. Island. Island. Okay. Next one. Adventure. Adventure. I felt three drops. Okay. Next word. Sand. Sand. I felt one chin drop. So one syllable. Lobster. Lobster. I felt two drops, so two syllables. It's really important to make sure that you're saying the word normally, but it's okay to say it a little slower so that you can really feel it, but you don't wanna say obst, er, er, and break it all up and make it disjointed like that because then you're not getting an accurate count and you're just not saying the word right. And you also don't wanna add that uh at the end, like sand because then you're gonna add another syllable that doesn't belong. Remember the word is sand, we're gonna say sand, okay? So no us at the end of those words and say them normally, but just a little slower when you're counting syllables, okay? Next, we're gonna count how many words are in some sentences. Now, be very careful that you only count each word as one, even if it has more than one syllable, okay? Here we go. First, our first sentence is, my brother likes to play. My brother likes to play. Five words. Notice brother, it's two syllables, but we only count it as one word. So do that one again. My brother likes to play. Next sentence, the house is blue. The house is blue. Four words. I see a purple fish. I see a purple fish. Five words. I am swimming in the sea. I am swimming in the sea. 
six words. Notice again, swimming is only one word, okay? I am swimming in the sea, okay? Now, let's blend some sounds to make some words, okay? So another way to say sound is phoneme. So we can say that we're blending phonemes to make these words, okay? Here we go. S uh, mm. That word is sun. Fish. Fish. Crab. Crab. Swim. Swim. Good job. You can also break up words and do it the other way and then count the sounds. For example, if you were taking sun and you wanted to count the sounds, you could just slow it down to each sound and say s, uh, n, and you would be segmenting the word, breaking it up into sounds and also counting those sounds. So that's another activity that you can practice. So those are just a few different exercises that you can use to practice some important reading skills. And you can do the same type of practice with other sounds and other words, okay? Now I wanna read y'all one of my favorite books. This book is set on a tiny island in the beautiful country of Belize, which is in Central America. It sits on the western part of the Caribbean Sea. So I'm up here in Virginia, here's Mexico, and then beneath that is little country of Belize. It's a small country, but it is beautiful. The publisher of this book graciously gave me permission to read the story to you all. The book is called Key Boy, Barefoot Adventures of an Island Child. It's written by Jessica Redsit White and it's illustrated by Andrew Young. It was published by Little Blue House Publishing in Key Cocker, Belize. Now you might wonder, what is a key? A key is a small, low, sandy island that's on a coral reef. So not all islands are keys, okay? After we read the story, we're gonna do a simple retelling by recalling the characters, the setting, and three things that happened in the story. Okay, so we're gonna keep it pretty simple with our retelling. One thing that I love about the story that I hope that you pay attention to is how the author uses so many descriptive words so that even if you couldn't see the pictures, you can see what's happening in your mind. Okay, so enjoy. Key boy. Barefoot Adventures of an Island Child. I'm Guilford. I live in a little blue house on a little island in the middle of a great big sea. My house sits high up on stilts to catch a breeze. It has a big porch with hammocks and lots of space to play and chase my little brother around. My island is a little swoop of sand with fish and boats all around it. It is full of bright houses and pretty flowers and about a hundred coconut trees. I can walk and walk and walk and always end up back at my little blue house. As soon as the sun wakes up, Alvis and I run into Mama and Pa's room. The sun is up. We're awake, we shout. Mama says we are worse than a couple of roosters. Then Alvis and I romp and stomp around the porch until Mama finally says we can go outside. Try not to wake up the whole island, calls Mama, and stay in the yard. A yard means not in the middle of the street. So we stay in our yard until we get to the beach, which isn't our yard, but it's not in the middle of the street either. So it counts. We are good listeners. We have about a hundred hermit crab races, which takes forever because hermit crabs aren't straight walkers. I couldn't find my best hermit crab today. His name is Hermes. He is the fastest crab on my island. He wears a white plastic lid instead of a shell. Mama says that is unusual. Alvis finds two empty bottles. He is a good finder. So we wait and wait and wait until Miss Juanita finally opens the store. We trade the bottles for two shillings and now we are rich. Shillings are basically what we would think of as like a quarter. 
Then we trade our shillings for two bags of chips, and that is even better. Alvis and I race to catch up with our friend Dario on his way to school. His pa always gives us a mango from his fruit cart. Mama says we have to eat lots of good for us food to grow into big boys. So we tell her about the mangoes, but not about the chips. We like to help out at our cousin's snorkel shop. Alvis shows everyone how to put on flippers. Tourists smell like sunscreen and always ask us about a hundred questions. Tourists are people who go and visit a different place, okay? So these tourists are visiting his island from somewhere else. I help Big George carry the long pole for his manatee tour because it is so heavy. I am a good helper. I tell the tourists about all the fish they will see. My best fish is the spotted drum and the angel fish and the queen sugar fish and about a hundred more kinds. Snorkeling is the very best thing in the whole world. We see Pa's boat come in, so we ride to the dock to see what he caught. Pa used to be a key boy like me, but then he grew big, and now he's a fisherman. Pa gives us some fish scraps to feed the frigates. They swoop down and don't quite touch us, but almost. After lunch, I have to be quiet as a gecko because all the babies and big people take naps. The sun is hot, 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 so I keep under houses mostly. I practice crawling under Mr. Rodolfo's hammock without making a peep. Pick some cocoa plums. See how close I can get to an iguana. Lay under our water vat and spy on the chickens and win my best marble back from Julio. Since Mama isn't around to tell me, come down right now, I climb the breadfruit tree. It is my best tree. I can see my whole island from the top. Finally, after a hundred years, everyone wakes up from their naps and I can whoop around and make as much noise as I want. All the big kids come home from school, so we race and chase each other until we are so tired we crash down and make sand angels. Then comes the best time of day, lobstering time. Pa swims around and uses a big hook to scoop up the lobsters. That is the easy part. I have to make sure they don't scramble out of the bag, which everyone knows is the hard part. I am a good lobsterman. While Pa cleans the lobster, I go get an orange juice with Mama and Elvis. We wait at Horse Eye Jack's. That's where everyone on the island goes to drink juice and laugh and swim. The tourists always take hundreds of pictures of the sun going down into the sea. The sun gets bigger and bigger and lower and lower and then it goes away and it is nighttime. Pa rides us back to my little blue house. Mama and Alvis are cuddling in one of the hammocks, so Pa and I climb into the other one. My island is cool and dark and quiet. The sun is down, I say. It is tired. Yes, the sun is sleeping, says Pa. When will the sun wake up, I ask. When you wake up, says Pa. The end. So I hope you enjoy that story. We're going to do a quick retelling of the story using this graphic organizer that I already set up. Um, I wrote the title of the story, Key Boy, up here. Then we've got a spot for the characters, the setting, and three events or three things that happened in the story. Now, for time, I went ahead and um, drew these pictures for you so that um, you could see how I would do this. So characters, that's the first stop. Remember characters are the people, animals, creatures, or even things in a story that can think, feel, and act. So in this story, the characters were Guilford and Alvis. Now I am by no means not the artist from this story or um, even close to being able to do that, but I still doodled my own picture because I like to use pictures for these kinds of retellings because then I can show it to someone and be able to tell what happened um, using those pictures and some labels. So either a word or sentence to tell what happened. So uh, I drew Guilford and Alvis there, did my best job dry, drawing them. So by no means does your picture have to look the same as mine does or the story, but you'd get the point. So I'm going to put Guilford and Alvis here as the characters from the story. Now next, 
the setting. So the setting of a story is when and where a story happens, where it takes place. So um, the main part I'm going to put about the setting was it happened on an island. So I can also say how it happened um, through the day um, because there was part of it the day, part in the early evening. I'm just going to focus on where the story took place, which is on an island. So I drew my picture of a little island. Now, again, it doesn't look identical to the story. So yours can just be a little sketch, however you want to do it, okay? Now, the next part is three events from the story. So three things that happened in the story. And I drew one event that stuck out to me that happened in the story was when they traded some bottles that they found for some chips. I thought that was cool. So I drew that. So I just drew a couple of bottles and then some chips and then I labeled it bottles and chips. You could write it as a whole sentence um, and or you could just label it with the words like I did. So the first event I wrote recorded was they traded the bottles for the chips, bottles and chips. The next one that stood out to me that I thought was cool was when they were at the snorkel shop and Guilford was telling the tourists about all the fish that they were going to see when they went snorkeling. So I colored for the next part, I colored some fish and I just wrote the word fish and then I will put that here. Now, Normally, I would just draw directly onto the graphic organizer, but again, for the sake of time, I went out and pre-drew and colored so that I could just put them there for you, okay? So you can see one event, a second event, and then now a third event from that story. I really loved when uh, Guilford climbed up that breadfruit tree because he could see the whole island, and I just thought that that was beautiful. So the next part that I drew was the tree. And again, it's not identical to the tree in the story, but it will help me remember what happened, an event that happened in the story. So that's the tree with the ground and then the um, water and then some sky. So I will tape that down as my third event and I just labeled it as tree. So here is my completed graphic organizer. So that uh, will help me to remember who the characters were, the setting, and three events that happened in the story. Okay, so that is that. Now, you could also use this strategy to retell most other stories, but you could also use it to retell things that you did during your day or week. So you could write, you could draw who was with you, or just if it's just yourself, you could draw where you were as the setting, or what time of day, or. Um, even the season as part of the setting. And then you could just say three things that you did, whether in that day or that week. So you can um, use that for that as well, in addition to retelling a story. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and the book, Key Boy, Barefoot Adventures of an Island Child. But I also encourage you to check out, if you can find them, these books are awesome and they're all part of the series, Key Boy and Kite Day and Key Boy Visits the Jungle, okay, by the same authors, Jessica Ritzikwai and illustrated by Andrew Young. So um, hopefully you enjoyed that today, and thank you for tuning in, and have a great day.